Um, my thought is with you. I think Canada are favored here. I say 3-2 instead of 3-1. However, I think whoever wins Arabia wins the series because it is so close. And in particular, because I favor Canada on the Arabia-style maps. If Spain wins, uh, that really does change my confidence levels in them going forward. So Tato, the king of Spain, so fun to watch in team games. He is here playing as the Ethiopians. And then he's teamed up with Lan, who I still think to this day, Dave, goes under some people's radars as far as skill. Yeah. And then he's up against Hera. Uh, he's not flying underneath anyone's radar. He's been one of the best players this year. And he's playing Magyars, teamed up with Slam, who is the Chinese. I think Lan, a lot of it, like... A lot of Lan's playing ability depends on his confidence and what emotional state he's in. Yeah. Because we know he can get fired up. Remember him at NAC, dude? Like, yep. he's a player that I, th I think thrives on um, being fired up. And it can also hurt him, though. If he gets a little bit tilted, he can carry that on. So we'll see what he can pull out today. I'm looking at Tato and Lan's maps, and their gold positions, I'm not loving it, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it could be really awkward for both of them, and they're both going to be going for ranged units. But I think what's even more awkward is that Tato is likely, and I say this because he's done this almost every single time, wanting to go Drushfast Castle. And I don't see this map being all that good uh, for that strategy. And I think it's a lot of walling to pull off for him. So maybe he'll have to go more meta into Feudal Age. On the other side, I see a scout going forward super early for Lan against Terra. Yeah, he's just trying to pick off any sheep he can find. Actually, don't tell he me. Might he might actually get those. find those four, dude. He's gonna oh get my... them. Oh, oh my god. Oh, dude, that's awful. Oh, Hera's down 300 food because of that. That is brutal. And he's just been staying at home, pushing in his ostrich. He really, I mean, let's say it how it is. I think you've got to know better there and not put your goats that far out. Yeah, especially in a tournament game, especially at the front of your TC. Like, you can ha have them at the back, chilling. Yeah. But not at the front like that. I think that's just, you know, first game jitters, maybe, uh, for Hera. Even with all the experience, maybe you get that sometimes. So you're not really thinking about the possibility of your opponent coming forward. I mean, he has but, pushed uh, in 280 food, and he's yeah. lost 300. So and he's going to lose another one now to Lan. What type of heat-seeking scout is this? Able to find all these goats. That's good. Good early pressure from Land without even attacking. Yeah. <laughs> Harris Harris got to feel like he's already behind. I also think situation, especially with Magyars with no definitive eco bonus. Did you Harris like you're see? He must have seen that the goats were yellow goats, right? He knows who he's up against, I believe. Yeah, he does. Okay. Yeah, that's good because I think the big thing about sending the scout forward is just knowing who you're up against because those positions are not fixed. Um, Tato, adding a mill. And I don't see any sign that he will go for that Drush, which is what we've seen a lot from him, Dave. So um, I'm, I'm curious how Slam's going to perform here because he's really good in meta rolls with archers. And this that's what Arabia is built for. What is Slam doing with his scout? Did Tato steal some goats and Slam's like looking for them? It just seems no, like a really found random them. position. Oh my God. Look at it. Can you see them? No, I'm... Oh my God, they're right there in the... <laughs> Oh my god. You know what? We've talked about this over the years. Slam gets unlucky in tournament games. It's not just nerves for him. Yep. Which he's admitted there is more nerves than maybe some other players, but he gets unlucky and frequently. <laughs> this is one of those instances. Yeah. I, it's still manageable for him, but he's he's looking wrecked, everywhere. Watch, Tato's just going to go right there and find them probably <laughs> at some point. Atto's curious on if there's going to be a barracks, if there's going to be a wall up. And he actually sees a barracks now. So that's Slam wanting to go Drushfast Castle then? That's interesting because with Chinese, it's kind of awkward to be competitive with Ethiopians with that build. Mm -hmm. But maybe you feel the need to, to defend in some way as Tato's also adding the barracks. And while this could be man at arms, it looks more like a Drush. So delayed Drush for him. Expect walls and militia. God, it's so nice for land finding those goats. As Franks, that's crazy. Like, delay all your farms until feudal and you get all the upgrades. <laughs> and, and yeah, exactly. You, you already have sick farms. Then you have the forage bonus. I mean, what yeah. a start. I, I talked about taking advantage of the small moments before this series. Bit of good fortune for Spain. 
that they really need to to snowball this into a bigger lead in feudal. And look at the walls already from Tato, dude. That is that is a commitment. He's got one, two, three, four villagers out building walls right now. Yeah. And he still has like that's only half his map. He still has another half to go. I wonder if Slam is rushing because of the preparation from Canada. I know Canada's been training a lot, as have most of the teams, which I'll touch on later on, but I think that Slam has simply assumed, based on how Tato has played with Ethiopians in the past, that this is Rush Fast Castle. Look how he's playing. He hasn't even scouted it, and he's just waiting with his own militia. Hmm. Tato actually moving his militia towards Hera. It seems like anyways. And Tato is not completely walled off, Dave, but it looks like he is going to achieve the walls in time. And it's not its not the prettiest walls in the world, but he can still take wood, still take food, still take gold, which is all he'll need for now. Yeah, Hera's being a little bit annoying in land space. Lane was chasing after him, but uh, he's going to get away. He sees the stable, but that's no surprise whatsoever against mm -hmm. Franks. You know that that's coming. And Slam's actually going to find out here that Tato is fully walled. Tato managed to do it. He had six villagers walling at one point. But so he's housed somehow. <laughs> Tato wants to drush the berries. And he's looking around here. And yeah, he'll see that the berries are walled. Now, he does not know about the ostrich out here. But those villagers will naturally come back to drop off the food in a second. Let's see. Yeah, Slam paying close attention to this. He might find a sheep. <laughs> that's true. Oh, come no. on. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> what? what are you He's, kidding me? Look at how small that tile. He, like, explored one extra tile there, too. <laughs> oh. That's that's so unfortunate. But also, that food that he's just brought in from the ostrich is also very, very helpful. Tato did not have that. And Tato will get plus 100 food, plus 100 gold when he gets to the next age. This and... rush from Tato has done nothing, man. No. I mean, same for Slam. But yeah. he is going to head over to Hera now, and Hera's going to be trying to wall up, so maybe Hera could lose a vill. I mean, maybe. It's so hard to pick a vill from Hera with a Drush. Like, the the speed on his quick walls and the recognition when units are in his uh, near his economy is just insane. And yeah, yeah he pre-walls just in time. Like, just in time. Probably because Slam told him that he couldn't see the Drush anymore. Yep, that's a communication. And that's there's been so many moments over the years where... Maybe the communication wouldn't be on point there from Canada, and Hera would fall slightly behind. But that's really good work from Slam to tell his teammate, hey, it might be coming towards you. But what I think's not ideal for Canada is the fact that Hera can't get those full walls up like Lan is trying to do. Even though there's still some pretty big gaps for him, it's looking all right currently. Well, he's got, he's got like the foundations of them down, right? At least he's not completely exposed. He yeah, has some yeah. in, the, in the front. He's got some on the side, so if he wanted to, it would only take him, you know, 30 seconds to complete the rest of it. It's just what kind of pressure is going to be coming his way while he's still open. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Tato's just going to hold that villager there. <laughs> he knows it's behind the wall. Yeah, so Tato waiting around, knows his Drush is probably doomed at this point. Era decides to bring the scouts back home, and I'm comparing the uptimes, uh, or the eventual uptimes for the Archer players, Dave, and this is so close. You've got the range blacksmith for Tato. He's on an Archer. You now look and you have range blacksmith for Slam. He'll make an Archer. Here comes Land to Hera's base, but Hera has the hill with Magyar scouts, and he took, like, no damage from those militia. Mm -hmm. But now he is outnumbered with the scouts. Hera He's really needs to take his gold at some point soon if he wants to go up to Castle Age and go to Knight. So, yeah, this is good for Spain. But Hera needs to clear this and probably could with a Spearman or two. God, look at the, like, shape of these bases. Like, Slam's base, the mm -hmm. wall. <laughs> it's so weird. Tatum's <laughs> base is so weird. Hera's base looks so weird. It's so, it's so funny. We, we make these maps to be as open as possible without being extremely unfair. Players still wall. And then in the most recent patch, which we're not playing on, it's now longer to wall. Players still wall. They need to be safe, especially in team games. I get it. So, uh, Hera is still at home, and Tato and Slam will both be in Castle Age shortly. So, neither Drush, like Slam's Drush and Tato's Drush, basically did nothing. Mm -hmm. They just distracted military a little bit. They didn't even distract Eco yeah. at all. I mean, what a confidence boost it would be for Canada to win this game after all the small things going wrong, though. If they could yeah. win this, it'd be huge. 
Uh, I'm curious now on what the military counts will be as Tato not hesitating at all to send his archer numbers forward towards Slam, who has exposed wood lines on either side. Yeah, Slam needs to figure out some better way to wall his base because the wood is just the major issue at the moment, especially being up against the archer player, right? It's not like the other guys on, on the other side of the map is right beside you. It's the same thing on the flip side, though. Tato's wood line and gold, all rangeable by archers. So it's just who gets the momentum and who gets the lead here. And right now it is Spain. And Tato getting plus 100, plus 100. Crossbow Bodkin on the way. They see a palisade wall and a house. And Spain attacks. It's going to be a bit awkward for Slam and Hera here. They're mm -hmm. split up. They're on opposite sides. And Slam can't really hold that hill against crossbow numbers from Tato. Okay, so there's there's one thing that Tato does best, and it's buying time with armies. So they've they've knocked on the door at Slam's base. A lot of teams would stay there in micro. They're now gonna shift over towards Hera. Suddenly Canada has to react to this. And if you watched the last set with Spain against Argentina, Tato was the master of making Argentina react to them while they had oh, significantly less moment military. By Tato here, you see with that scout. Oh. Hera's trying to put houses there just to delay. He wants to still have villagers on gold, so when he gets to Castle Age, he can produce those knights. He needs a tower. But Tato had one scout there blocking the house wall. He needs a tower. Hera needs to tower. This is... Uh, he's, he's placed a market. There's still a hole there, is there not? Oh, bring this your, is awful. Th bring your gold villagers back. This is so reminiscent of the last 2v2 we watched. Remember the first game in Arabia? Hera underreacted. He got pushed off of gold, and now he's going to be off gold for forever. And Dave... When that happened, Canada won that game still because they were up against Poland. This is a completely different beast now as Tato. What a game for him so far. Snipes a crossbow and they'll just hold the hill. Yeah, that's fantastic micro from Tato. Look at this, dude. He picks off like three crossbows there after he did that shenanigans with his scout to delay the house walls from coming up. Really good play from Tato. Slam here. with zero kills, eight deaths. Minus two sheep still. <laughs> and uh, this is this is exactly what Spain would want. At this position, as Hera did take that gold in the back, Canada need to clear this. And I think Tatu and Lan will be very happy that their ecos will likely be better. Lan now making the TC on that exposed forward gold. And they'll shift focus again. Look at this. Like, it's so... I'm so unbelievably jealous of how Tato's able to do this. He does this with Secret or, or GL as well. Now they're just going right back over to Slam as Slam's going yep. to save Hera. Yep, and Slam loses two Lumberjacks. That exposed wood line again mm -hmm. still being a problem. And Lan already has the plus two, dude. And Hera does not even have plus two yet. He was off gold for so long. Tato was on one TC this entire time. So he's not out of the second TC. Slam, who might find the goats. Oh, he's Hera's found the wood goats. Line. Lan is in Hera's wood line right now. Oh, what the, what the, where, with, oh, with, with knights? Yeah, he already killed a villager, delayed the quick walls. There's a farmer just tripping out there on the corner. Yeah. And now Slam has gone back home and Spain says, okay, I'll take these crossbows out as well. Coordination from Spain really working well, Dave. It is still winnable for Canada, but they need to somehow get their armies together. Yeah, it seems like Slam hasn't been able to mass this entire game. Like, Tato's constantly got six or seven crossbows around, but Slam is groups of four, groups of five. Yep. Really, really struggling to meet up with his buddy, and I don't think they're going to meet up anytime soon either because Tato's army is right in the middle of Hera's base. Yeah, Hera losing more villagers, tons of idle time for him, 20 idols. This is not what you want your best player to be doing, just reacting like this. Spain have really come out, and, and look at this now. Hera sending villagers over to get a TC, and if Land's paying attention, which apparently he's not, I could have sniped Vils there. Spain just moving around. Yeah, this is actually good. That's very good for Canada that Land didn't notice that. Yeah. That's an opportunity now. Now Hera can potentially get ahead in, in eco over Land if he drops more TCs, but he's got to stop losing villagers. <laughs> he just lost an addition, additional two on the farms. Mm-hmm. Look at Tato with the other group of crossbows, Dave. Every time Slam is being told by Hera that he needs help, uh, he sends units over, and then he needs units at home. Tato Just with... abandon that wood line, man. It's a graveyard there. Yeah, the other side's probably the way to go. 
Can Canada find one moment? Can they get one cleanup to then take control and counterattack? They need it soon. It's not like the Vil Count's that crazy. Slam has more Vils than Tato. It's just the military control for Spain. Yeah, I think the, the key matchup here is probably going to be looking at Land's economy versus Hera's economy, right? Yeah. Because they've been camping Hera's economy, and if Hera eventually pulls ahead of Land, that's going to be some problems for Spain. I think Hera could do it, too. You're, you're Magyars, right? So if you're down a knight or two with the extra attack, it's helpful. I'm looking at the Vil counts, considering everything Hera's been through. He's only down it's pretty six. pretty good. Yeah. Well, he never, got the, he never got the plus two armor, dude. He put that into making more villagers. But now he loses another. And as he wants to go forward and will go forward, that army still needs to be dealt with. Now there's another force coming in from Spain. It's nonstop pressure. This is unbelievable. Another... And Slam's trying to go in to Tato's base as well. He's going to take that position on the hill, wiping up uh, Tato's reinforcements. So finally, Slam comes forward. And now Tato's going to have to be worried about that a little bit. Yep. And definitely his wood line's exposed now. Slam will need to send some help over as Spain find the hill again. Era does have chain farting on the way, and Spain actually just left the hill. This could be the moment. The Tato's crossbows are split up. Land's knights are split up. Hera will try and quick wall them out with a gate. Oh, that's beautiful. Well done. So good that from extra Canada. Second is so great for Canada. He gets to wipe up all those crossbows. They can't take that other force, but he gave himself the time to finish that fight. Yeah. Land 63, villagers Hera 51 though. So the lead definitely extended there for Spain. Can Canada react to this? Slam's forward army will get mopped up now by Tato, who's done a good job economically lately. Only nine villagers behind Slam. And it's I think Slam needs to carry with a mess of archers now, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I think Hera can actually hold at his own base for the time being. And and you can see Slam sent two villagers forward on Tato. Ah, okay. Uh, to place a siege workshop, but that was when he was winning the fights against him, and Tato managed to clear up that army, so... Yeah. Now that siege workshop looks a little dubious. Not to mention the knights from land swinging over could take out the workshop and the villagers. And that's good control for Spain where they want it. <laughs> What a series or this is going to be, Dave, and what a game this has been so far. Did you catch the tail end of my sneeze there? I heard. I, I wasn't sure what that was. I thought you were I, like, whoa. I muted myself, <laughs> and then I had my finger on the mute button, but I sneezed so violently that I hit the mute button. Okay. Mute <laughs> yeah, I was confused. It was half a sneeze, and I've never heard that noise before. So, Well, Slam, he's losing more crossbows, and it, it really sucks to be in Slam's position because... He needs to defend himself, but he also needs to defend Hera at all times. And Hera hasn't hit Land's base. He hasn't hit Tato's base. He hasn't even had units over to Slam's base. He hasn't been able to, so... The fact that Hera is still at 66 uh, villagers here is impressive. With an army count. Because they've been camping his eco the entire... Like, he hasn't ha been using half of his farms mm -hmm. this entire time. They've been idle. Back in the day when we were talking about Hera, back in the Boobly days, we talked about his speed being used in military. Nowadays... He's able to use that with his macro. And can he catch Tato's army out here? No, it's the other way around. Tato happy to take this fight. And Hera, oh, never mind, chooses to engage. And but Lan actually went over to clear up the Siege Workshop from Slam. Doesn't finish the job. And now Hera is trying to clear up these archers, but I think Lan's gonna be here in time. Yeah, that, that seems like a really bad fight for Hera. Yes, he's destroying crossbows, but now he doesn't have knights. And now Lan has tons of them. I think Lan and Tato should... But well, Tato probably needs to click up to Imp soon because Slam's on the way. But they need to double someone hard now. Have Lan okay. add extra stables at home and just choose a player and kill them fast. I think ideally it's probably Slam because he is on his way to Imperial, but they don't know that. Dude, that was broken. Slam didn't get hit by a single arrow shot there. <laughs> well, Tato he's fired by... He's got hit by like, quite a few in this game, though, so... Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. That was an excellent micro from him. And good call to bring back your, your main force of crossbows to your base. You know you're going to Imperial Age. You want to get those upgraded. Uh, and there's no point in losing them to this army at the moment. What do you think about the fact that Spain are still camping this hill? They just took out half of Hera's force. I, I really feel, feel like... like they should be pushing and trying to take a fight. Yeah, well... If you think about all the damage you've done to Hera this game, 
Like, you have to feel like Hera's in a worse spot than he is. Yeah. They don't have the vision that we have. Like, it's been an amazing effort from Hera to just even keep up with these guys mm -hmm. in terms of eco. And I think if you're Spain, you're thinking he's way farther behind than, than he than actually he is. is in this game. See how, how Lan is sending some of his knights back home. He's really worried about Hera showing up. Good moment for Canada here. Uh, over the next two minutes, they could do a lot to dictate the pace of the game. Now you have Tato running over to hit Slam. But Slam will be an imp. And then you have Hera forcing some reactions from Lan. Yeah, this is the first time that Hera's been over here uh, with knights. He's not going to find any holes. And Lan's actually knows this is coming and walling behind. Canada can win this game, Dave. Just because of these moments right here. Slam has 53 military and will be on Arbalest first. Way oh, ahead of Tato. Is Tato going to engage this? Is Tato going to engage this? Okay, he needs to run now. If Lan was here, it'd be amazing, but Canada are bringing this back. Yep, and that's all because of this, the distraction from Hera. Sending yeah. those knights in, and now Tat, or Lan's chasing those knights with his full force, and Hera's raiding the other TC now. Yeah. Upgrades on the way, Slam fighting up oh, the hill. Oh, and losing all of his army. Oh, man, what went wrong for Spain here? They needed to push. They didn't know Slam would be in such a beastly position. Tato forced to back away, Dave, but look at this brutal hill in the middle. It looked like Spain was going to control that, but I don't think so. I think it's going to be Canada for the next few minutes. But Dave, we talk about how good it was from Hera. He's going all in. Lan is soon going to be on Cavalier. So there yeah, is a... Lance, Lance kept his army alive, too. Yeah. I mean, Hera's kept his army alive throughout this whole thing, which is great, but look at the amount of knights from Lan here. Exactly. <laughs> 43 knights. About to be Cavalier. Like how much damage is Slam realistically going to be able to do on his own? Tato still will have decent military numbers, and the Cavalier could swoop over at any time and take out those Arbalest. Slam's just going in. I think Slam, Slam knows he wiped up that one big force, so there's probably nothing here to stop him unless Land comes over. Yep. So he split up his army. Look, he's got one in the woodline in the back. He's got some on the gold in the farms. He's got some on the reinforcements from the archer ranges at the front. He's everywhere. Like, this is really, really aware from Slam to split up like this. Usually you don't want to because you're afraid of your military getting cleaned up, mm -hmm. but he knows there's nothing from Tato at the moment. Also, really reminiscent as Tato makes these panic TCs of what happened against Poland in game one, with Slam carrying the team and Hera falling behind. Now, granted, Slam Hera's been find doubled, this but... TC? Yo, Slam can wipe up half of Tato's eco here. Yeah. Big thing, though, is if Tato has wooden gold, he can still make arbs. And now it seems like Hera could die to this. Don't tell me Hera traps. The house walls are or... so beautiful. <laughs> Why are Tato's units patrolling into a stable there? A house walls. Hera Dave. tried to trap. He had a villager behind. He was trying okay. to. Not that the Cavalier would ever stay trapped for long. I mean, they can just destroy the buildings pretty easily. But good delaying tactics uh, from Hera on this end. Slam getting coinage to send resources over to Hera. But doesn't Hera just die to this? Uh, here comes Slam to save the day. That's a lot of Frank Cavalier. Land untouched currently. Slams in the back wood line from Tato. Tato down to 82 villagers. He's lost 20 something. I mean, and Hera hasn't, they haven't even gotten into Hera's economy yet. This is They're true. They're just now going in. Hera, after this game, he is not going to think back very fondly of this gold position. <laughs> Spain no. have been here so many times. Oh boy. It, it's not even the worst one on the map. Like I would say Land had a worse gold position. It's just he got pressured early and... Paladin on the way. Lan with 56 military. And he's on Franks with Paladin on the way. Can Slam make enough Arbalest to deal with that? That's ridiculous. I'm not sure Lan should be engaging there. Era. Save up that force, right? Hera with some quick walls. This shouldn't accomplish too much. Buys a little bit of time, but he's tossing away villagers. Now he's going to be down below 90 soon. I think those are great quick walls. Oh, wait Hera, a dude. second. Those are amazing. Why have Spain... What is? What are they doing, Spain? They need Why to... It's break a house. It's 29 HP, Dave. They're losing their mass before Paladin comes in. They should be running away with that army. Meanwhile, Slam coming in with Siege Ram... He has arbs, he has pikemen, it might soon be Hal, but Lan oh, will need to get support train. over there. That's the pain train about to arrive at the station for Tato. Siege Ram, you can't do anything against that. That means all of Lan's reinforcements need to go to Tato. 
And again, or Dave, the Slam's economy. look at Slam's economy. Exactly. Paladin will be in. That will mean a good fight on either side, I think, for Spain. Look at the Cavalier from land trying to run. Herod was trying to quick while he was thinking about it. Palisade Come Gates. On. No. Palisade Gates is Slam now without mobility, trying to push on the front, but is getting raided like crazy. Uh, more quick walls and gates and whatnot needed. Might as well just take a fight here, Lan. He's had the full tour and then some. Slam already does have Halberdier. He has Halberdier, Siege Ram, Arbalist. Also, look at that castle from Hera. He's in Castle Age, but he's somehow going to drop a forward castle with Pikeman there. I think he was watching Licks in the previous set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Lan, he's doing a lot right now, Dave. He's in three different spots, plus he has military at his base. I can't say that the use of his paladins have been all that convincing because he hasn't engaged against the armies, but still it does leave Hera crippled. Like, now, can Tato and Lan survive this crazy push from Slam, who's sitting at 200 population? Yeah, Tato's reboomed a little bit. He's back up to 108 villagers, and now yeah. Hera's in the position that Tato was in, except Hera's not Imperial. So we've been saying it for the last... You know, five or ten minutes, Slam's got to carry here. He's got to do some serious damage. He's doing it, too. And what's really fascinating, if you add up the team populations, it's pretty even. It's about 210. Look at the military count Or not count 210, Slam, what am I though? talking about? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, military count for Slam, 92. At what point will he lose his army? Are they going to go hit Slam? I think they are, but that also leaves Tato on his own. And you still have Hera with this wacky castle drop pikeman night raid coming in towards land. I think the theory is Tato saying, like, I'm 6 TC. <laughs> like, I, can, <laughs> I can deal for a while, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Dave, there's extra golds in the middle that teams could take. Uh, Hera still in castle age, not even dreaming of clicking up the imp. Land really needs to start trebbing that back soon. You look how many villagers he has on stone. 25 as they're heading right back over or Terra. I like this call from Team Canada, though. Like, Imp would have delayed Hera so much yeah. to get there, and he would have died. I uh, also... So going the full in castle is probably the right play here. I also feel like the call from Spain is quality to get back over to Hera's base. Hera's yeah. doing a great job versus Slam, so hit his eco, and it also means that Slam has to send military back from Tato's base, and he's doing that right now. So this is a good fight for Spain. Concern for them is going to be, can land have gold long-term to make paladins? And can they get the trade up and running soon? We just also appreciate the fact that this, for the last 10 minutes, Slam has had like three armies on the go. Yeah. At three different locations, yep. controlling all of them. Really, really good play from him. And that is a big, big loss. For the player who's in cast lakes to only have 100 pop, and Hera can add more vills, but there's no way he can dream of imp now. And they're not adding trade. Actually, land with Paladins in the corner there, denying those eventual markets if they do come. And Tato now with Bombard Cannons on the front will probably Hera start pushing back these castles. Castle. What? <laughs> Make a defensive castle, you madman! <laughs> I think Hera's thinking about going up, too. If he cancels his Pikeman, he might be able to get there. Maybe. See? No, he's getting... He hand wasn't card. thinking of going up. He's getting hand guard. All right, yeah. that's helpful. This is such a weird position. Spain are going to start adding trade, but Tato, he hasn't been able to take what's left of his main gold. And also this gold, Slam's been soaking it all up. So there's not a lot of gold for Spain remaining. No, and, and it's not like they can start the trade. They don't even have anything to really like start yeah. it with if you're in Tato's position. It's weird. Then again, I think Hera's going to lose a few castles over the next couple moments. Maybe just one or two. Um... Slam trying to hold the position on the front. What a freaking game, man. This is insane. Look yeah. at, just look at the mini-map. There's different colors everywhere. <laughs> Everyone's raiding everyone. It's uh, really impressive stuff from all the players. Yeah, I, I'm so impressed with Land's ability to raid Slam, assist Tato, raid Hera, invest into trade, all while there's three castles on the front of his base, and he's losing gold and stone access. Like, really impressive performance from Land who was the player you said going into this series that we weren't too sure on. He's, he's definitely a quality player. How's his mindset going to be? What's his form going to be? It's been amazing here. Oh, Tata with a super annoying Arbalest army, killing six villagers from Hera, and that's a big part of his economy. Yeah. And he's going to run around with those Arbalest, continuing to harass 
Hera just needs to stabilize for like one minute here without being raided. He's actually making MAGA or Hussars. Pog champ, let's go. We said we wouldn't see unique units. <laughs> oh, we're seeing unique units. They do have a bonus against Siege, so maybe he can snipe the Siege and keep the castle up, but I doubt Kata's he'll have a lead. He's getting ready for a big push. Garrison uh, capped Rams in his workshops. He's got a big old army of uh, skirmishers and arbalist, and he's ready to push this position from Slam, and Slam's actually moving away with this army. Yeah, I think he sees the light cap, Dave. This isn't oh, no, the first time Slam okay. has had to deal with raids, and he does not have the most mobile army comp. He does have 107 military, though. That's actually a bit of a problem, though, because if you're not pushing with that, you're not going to have the eco long term to make a lot more. He's pushing on the left, and he's holding on the right. It's true. Look at Tato with that group still microing it as he will push back there. But I do see Spain has the trade now, Dave, which should give them a lead long term. I think the raids from Lan have just done so much. Like, he's mm -hmm. constantly been harassing Slam's economy, Hera's economy, Tata with a few arbalists yeah. killing villagers, and now Canada are in a losing position at the moment. Yeah, there, there's so many idols for Slam. And if it's not Slam, it's Hera. Tata says, give me my golds, give me my stones, give me my hill, and he will show Slam how it feels. Actually, hold on a second. Magyar Huss are on the way. They could have something to say about this. Nine plus four, Pog. Right, nine plus four, bonus <laughs> against Siege. Actually, that castle will they stay actually, up. Yeah, they'll actually work. I was laughing at him, but uh, best looking unit in the game coming in here, Clutch. Canada, if they win this game, it's because they've been able to castle the gold spots that were all on the front for Spain and take control of those hills. There's a hill on either side. Tremendous play from Canada to stay alive in this. I mean, Hera feels like he's just been treading water. He barely has eco. Only 76 bills. Slam is 40. <laughs> 40 bills for Slam. Those raids from land have just done work on the farms from Slam, on the wood line from Slam. Oh. And even 11 of those 40 are idle, too. Yeah. And and oh Lan boy. continues to move around with Paladin. Still has Paladins in the corner he's been repositioning. Canada seems aware. But what's funny is... There's so many Arbalests out there, and Spain doesn't have a lot of gold right now, that the engagements are not going so well for Spain. Slam has 37 villagers, though. But, but Dave, <laughs> he has 93 military. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... I don't know. I, I, I guess there's a possibility, because Tato's been off gold for so long, and they don't really have the trade up and going for Tato yet. Yeah. But it's still going to be so tough. Like, it's so weird to me how this game is developing. Canada, I think over the next five minutes, we'll have a lot of time to get their eco right, Dave. They're adding trade. They've cleared up everything. Spain are, are trying to respond or react again to all these raids. Vikings, or not Vikings, what am I talking about? Franks. Uh, they really need to make paladins here. They're just making light cav because land's investing into trade. But when can he get back on the full paladin spam? It needs to be soon. Look at that farming eco from Lan. If Hera ever gets back there with a raiding party. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You can do the same thing to Lan as he did to Slam. And That's... completely wipe up all the eco. But Lan is in the trade. He sees that Canada's trading right now. Yeah. And I love how even though the going's a little bit rough, he's still investing into trade and he's raiding. I think the second they stop that, they're in a poor position. It's Tato who's really struggling now because he does not have gold income to make arbs. If he could make arbs... He's trying to flank this main force from Slam. You see, he oh, went all boy. the way around with oh, the skirmishers boy. and the arbalists. That's bad Slam needs Slam. to notice Slam, this army is dead. Unless he gets back to those castles somehow. Yeah, he will He will lose a bit. As skirms do fire pretty slowly, and Hera could always help out with Magyar Hussar. But remember, this trade is right here, and Slam still has this forward position. Is it possible for Slam and Hera to push the trade line from Spain... This is an insane game. <laughs> this is nuts. I'm, I'm loving this, Dave. But again, Lan, he's on Hera raiding. He's on Slam raiding. He's in Tato's base to save him, and he's in his own currently as well. This is very impressive play from him. MVP for Spain, certainly. But he needs to mix in Paladins now. Look at the military production queue for the Spaniards yeah. as opposed to the Canadians. Canadians are just producing all eco units right now. Yeah, true. Slam... 58 bills. Credit and that Hera force for making... from Tato is a problem. Yep. The one coming into their trade. Yep. 
Yeah, pikes won't defend from that. I didn't even realize that Hera had so many pikemen around. 130 pop for both Slam and Hera. What pikemen are you talking about? I don't see any pikemen. They're dead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be pikemen. We'll see Paladin soon, I think. Lan has, has been so patient. Just making light calf. Any gold that he receives from trade, he invests in more trade. I think we'll see a lot of Paladin soon as Hera gets a lead mag or Hussar. At some point, Hera's going to be back into this game <laughs> eventually. Slam's kind of had to uh, carry the bulk of the fights here. Yeah. Because Hera can't really fight straight on with just Magyar Hussar. I mean, Hera could do a similar thing where he just makes Elite Magyar Hussar and invests into trade to eventually get Paladin. They it's really, time. like, it Spain need to kill. Time, like, they need to apply a finishing blow here. But yeah, uh, Paladin's now queued, Dave, and more raids from Lan. Yeah, Lan finally has a decent amount of trade cards. And like you said, eight Paladin in the queue. Those will be so tough to stop. But Hera actually cleaning up the army potentially from Tato in his yep. base. He is. Good micro from Tato. His castles are standing. Elite Magyar Hus are no joke. They don't cost gold. They're very strong, very good against arbs. I'd say they are worse than Paladin in many situations. My word, dude, but uh, I'm looking at that trade line, waiting for it to be Paladins instead of just Light Calf for Lan, waiting for maybe some Siege to take the castles out from Hera, who now has 81 farms. This is no joke, man. With 81 farms for Hera and 83 farms for Lan, <laughs> this game could continue for a while. How many castles does he have, though? He only has three castles. Three, yeah. So he can't really spam them. Ooh, now Slam! I mean, the real issue now, Hera's fine with Magyar Hussar, but Slam is, is kind of dead. Um, he's continuously getting raided, and here comes Tato now with a big ball of skirms. He can't defend skirmishers on his own. No, not with Halberdier, not with the Herbalist. What's going on with the needs... score, by the way? How on earth is Kanda even close in score with these populations? It's really confusing. I don't know. The kill death isn't even that much of a difference it's really weird yeah that might change here in a bit there's not a lot stopping spain from sending this force right into the trade for canada what little trade there is anyways and Hera raiding with the magyar hussars but that's short-lived big ball of light cap and paladins and Hera sees it Hera will house well uh, impressive from Hera, man it feels like canada should have died a while ago but they are not going away quietly that's so many paladins. Mm -hmm. Slam needs to send his um, halberdiers that are basically useless on this side yeah. over to Hera's base. True. Wherever those paladins are, Slam needs to be there with halberdiers. He's patrolled them forward. Uh, there's Magyar Hussars here from Hera, but I don't think any amount of house walling. Whoa! I felt like that could have worked, but I don't think any amount of house walling is going to keep these units out of Hera's eco. Oof. And also, uh, Castle's being cleared up, so now Slam doesn't have that. He actually is running low on spots to take wood. I don't know why he's taking the forward wood right now, but... Expect the villagers to die there. Looks like Spain's gonna take this, Dave, if this continues, because Slam's eco is way too far behind. Era trying, but he's overboomed. He's 156 vils. He is 35 Magyar go to Lan's Go to Lan's point of view and look at his production queue. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, like, dude. Like, I seriously... Non-stop. I, I think people need to realize, Lan is an absolute god. Like, he's a top 25 1v1 player, and he had so much to do. Hera with those three castles on top of him, and Pikeman earlier, of course. He's got like 100 units queued up. Yeah. And it's about lasting for a very long time, so he's not going to delete any pop. He knows they are pushing even with the queue they have now. Yeah, that's wild. Even Tato as well, decent Q. But big thing for him is army numbers, and Dave, we see it with 80 military. There's no way that Canada can stop this. There's just no I way. I just shifted through all player point of views, so I went from lands, 100 units queued up, Slam had one villager. We're coming. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And it's a bit of a shame, because if you just arrived at the stream, you're probably thinking, man, Slam didn't have a great game. No, 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 Slam no, no. Slam had a fantastic game. Yeah, everyone did, really. Magyar Huss are not enough, despite that Q for Hera to take out Arbs. Against Skirms, it's good, but against Arbs, it's not going to be good enough. 
funny how the castle still stands there. I guess Spain hasn't realized that. Look at Lan, Dave. He had the paladins in the northern corner for like 15 minutes. And now he's like, surprise! Here they are. I'm back. Very well done. But yeah, I think yeah, we'll see the GG soon. It, it has to happen, right? Slam's only falling behind more and more. Yep, and every time uh, Hera kills a villager or a trade cart over here in land space, one of those units from the queue gets produced and True. <laughs> gets streamed into Canada's economy. True. Now Tato is just pushing this castle placement back from Slam. He's got skirmishers sitting under it. Yeah, he doesn't care. He doesn't, he doesn't care at all. He can replace them. Yeah, doesn't seem to care. You also have land with paladins in the trade route, so that's going to add up as well. Um, what amazing fight from Hera in this game because he was doubled pretty much all of it. And he brought his team back into a position where they could maybe win the game, but it just doesn't seem likely right now. I love the fight from Canada. To not call it quits right here. I think yeah. It's a good mentality to have, but waiting for Spain to get into that corner... And we have a pause from Team Canada. We might see a bit of that today. Strategic pause, possibly. Um, Hera's in the balance Discord right now. He's Going like, like, like Magyar like, Hussar need to be buffed. They lose every fight. Yeah. I don't understand this unit. He's trying. He doesn't know what the second unit tech is for Magyar, so he's checking the tech tree right now. <laughs> he's like, does that apply to Cav Archers? I thought that was Turks. <laughs> I have 86 on farms, and I'm still losing. <laughs> now, what's wrong like here? This. I mean, he has the Q, and he's doing the right things to invest into trade while making Magyar Hussars. Uh, but there's it's still not enough to stop the rot here. And uh, I can't say Tata's position is really the best, but he's got 56 military. He can queue up more. It, you know what really bothers me as we have this pause is that one castle that Slam has on 95 HP. We're back in business now, but seriously, they need to take that out. Not sure how much it will matter, though. Yeah, Mega Hussar Flood is great, but you can see the limitations here with Hera only having five castles. Yeah. He's got like nine queued up in every one, right? If he had six or seven, that's maybe probably... it could be an unstoppable flood. But... I, I think that's the one thing that Lan could have done better. He's had a near-perfect game, but I think Lan should have taken out those castles in the front of his base a while ago. With yeah. a few traps. You match, it's like, free, basically. Yeah, like there's no reason that Hera should be able to produce those. And uh, maybe he's tried and Hera's taken them out. I'm not sure. But wait, wait a second, dude. Like, Canada are holding their trade route somehow. I don't but know how if many that was... trade do they have left, though, because Land's been raiding constantly, and Slam has lost, like, all of his trade numbers. But if they're holding against gold units without gold units. <laughs> And they're slowly getting gold. I don't know. Maybe there's potential. Look at that. A Treb comes out from land. He loses it to the Magyar Hussar. I would be tilted if I were land right now, actually. This has to, like, on some level, too, for Canada, this has to feel pretty good. Even though you're losing, the fact that you've been in a losing position for half of this game yeah. and you're still alive is, yes. is a decent feeling. A hundred farms for Hera. A hundred and one farms. A hundred and two farms for Hera. He's only fighting with 45 military pop space. He's got six space. castles now. Maybe he can buy himself another castle eventually. Get seven flooding these. Man, these units. What is this? And we talk about reacting. There's been a whole lot of reacting for Spain. Every time Hera sends in those Genoese, or uh, not the Genoese Frostbone. What am I talking about? The elite Magyar, Magyar Hussar. Hussar. Lan gonna really kill needs this army from Tato now. Lan really needs to get some stables on that right side. Oh no, he has them. What am I talking about? Produce there, and um, you know they need to kill fast, man, because it really does feel like Harris giving his team a shot with these raids. Still, Arb Paladin should wreck Skirm Arb Magyar Hussar. It's just the fact that you can stay alive because you can snipe the siege and get in and out is that's what makes it so insane. Look how Tato has three Shotel Warriors sitting on that gold in the middle. Do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, just in case. That's pretty cute. Now Tato signaling the trade. He's he. I think he's diving for it. He's going to go right back there. And Lan has Paladins and Light Cabin yeah. support now. God, it's it's going to be really awkward like for Team Canada. Canada have enough. As Hera will now drop a castle there. Spain are moving in to finish off this game. 
Wasn't sure how Spain would be able to do on Arabia. It's definitely the strong suit of Slam. Certainly one of the strong suits of Hera. Land and Tato, no strangers to it, of course. And they'll sit here, and the markets are deleted, Dave. Getting rid of those markets so the trade doesn't run into this corner any longer. Still a great position for Spain on this hill. Uh, uh, Land is not attacking with his ally, though. Yeah, he's not. Plus, the castle will go up. I mean, I think here Spain just needs to shift focus, right? I think you you Look raid at the here. the staples from Land and the production buildings from Tato in Slam's base. I mean, <laughs> he has like 35 stables on the map right now. He'll fight yeah. up the hill. Just finish this game, Spain. Put Canada out of their misery. His resources are insane, too. His Q is nuts, man. <laughs> he's got like, dude, he's got like 60 paladin queued up. Yeah, he is. He has more in the queue than God. he what? has more in the queue than Hera has Magyar Hussars right now. <laughs> but actually, Hera has like 80 Magyar Hussars in the queue. But then again, it doesn't cost gold. This is over, man. This is over. It's time to think about calling it Canada. Slam is dead. What an amazing game to start off the series. But this, they're not pushing the castles. I'll say that much. But it seems like it's nonstop production from Spain, nonstop resources because of the trade. Surely this is over. Slam has nothing. Yeah, Slam's completely white. Yeah. It's done. GG. And there we go. What a what a great game though. Oh my god, back and forth and back and forth and teams holding on. Tato was almost dead at one point. Slam was almost dead at three points. Hera was almost dead the entire game yeah. until the very end. And the only player who wasn't really touched was the Frank player, Lan, and he certainly did damage to the eco from the two Canadians. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't threatened as much as the others, but that moment for Canada, they were behind all of Castle Age, and then they had Slam and Imp with the forward castles, and then Hera raiding Lan. That was the moment where it really felt like, you know what, Canada can do this. I think a lot of teams, they sit back, they worry about taking out the castles, and they keep their precious military at home. Land's raiding was insane in this game, Dave. And the reason that Slam had 90 military, but half of it was never at Tato's base, was because of Land's constant pressure on Hera and his constant pressure on Slam. Yeah, um, I, I feel like because Spain were able to get ahead, um... This is something that, I mean, they're, they're going to be very happy with this win, right? But if that's yep. an even game going into mid-feudal, <laughs> it feels like Canada will be a bit stronger going into Lake Castle and a bit stronger going into Imp. So this is going to be one heck of a series. I know this is one of those moments where I might be overanalyzing things, but I think the game swung when Land took those four goats from Hera. Because that's when it gave him the it gave him the advantage, and he was up to castle so much faster. I I than actually Heron. they were think, able to pressure that gold. I mean that helps, but what about Tato repositioning with his army? Threaten Slam, Slam reacts. Go to Hera. Slam has to chase. Slam has yeah. to chase again. Slam had it was that constant cycle of movement. I think for Spain, and you could argue that maybe there was an advantage. I think the big thing was that Hera couldn't fully wall, whereas Land could because of Tato's drush, right? Um, but yeah, you look at this KD, guys. You look at the amount of eco. It was a tremendous game, and it will be a six series. 1-0 Spain, and we now talk about the home maps. Um, I Chaos don't... Pit, please? Chaos Pit? <laughs> That's please? what I was about to say. Like, I don't think it's, it's really ideal for old Canada to have Chaos Pit as a home map to go to after losing Game 1 Arabia. But do you bring in Chris, the legend, team him of up with Hera, Chris. and make Dude, it messy? He... Chris thrives on Chaos Pit, dude. Chris is one of those players. I think we were talking about it after the last set. We were yeah. saying, like, Slam's a more meta player. Um, maybe decision making might be the issue, right? Or committing to something might be the issue. He has more hesitation. Sure. Chris, less of a meta player, but when he commits to something, he just goes all in. Yeah. And Chaos Pit is perfect for that style of play. I'm excited. We'll know ahead of time, so Dave and I can speculate on that in just a bit. Uh, but so Tang, thank you for dropping 10 gifted subs. The James Dash, aka or formerly Riot Dash, says Sheep Seeking Scout Heart. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dash up, will Dash? be here for one of the semifinals next weekend. So Pogs in chat for that. Thank you for the 41 months of support, my man. Uh, Nefton, a uh, Galley, Rehan, Lag. Thank you all for the subs. 
A $1 for every sub goes into the prize pool, and that all updates live at the bottom of your screens there when it happens. Chaos Pit. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't feel comfortable going immediately to Chaos Pit, but I know they've practiced a lot, so they have to have a strat in mind, and Dave, Chris is going in. I can see that much. This has to be a Chaos Pit for Canada. Yeah, I would assume that Slam would play Ghost Lake, and I yeah. think Hera's going to play every single... I don't think we'll see a Slam Chris match mm -mm. again this series. No, I don't think so. So if it is Chaos Pit, let's start to speculate. Persians, um, quite strong if you like the TC drop. However, since Nomad is a home map for Spain, you probably save that. And then Byzantines, that feels like it's Chris 100%. One oh, yeah. Chris with Byzantines is a that's really tough to stop. Yeah. Um, but what do you want with Byzantines? Because Byzantines making their trash units on a map with no gold in the middle strong. Um maybe Mongols actually. I don't think it's the best map for Mongols, but maybe not the worst because there is some hunts. I actually don't know. Um, but big thing to point out is that Goths is there for Spain. And this is from last month's patch. So Goths get free loom, which means they can make five militia while having loom. And no other civilization can do that because they'd have to research loom. And there's no gold in the middle to mine. So I think Goths and any scouts, if maybe even Goths and Incas might be on the radar for Spain. I don't like Incas here, Dave, because... Bill Rushing seems to drop off at some point. And then you're looking at Bills and Militia. I think Scouts are pretty good against that. But Can you go Slavs see. here for Team Canada? Slav Byzantine? Well, you I mean, have to use... You... Um... you have to use... Like, I would see Indians on, on Ghost Lake, right? And if you're picking Indians on Ghost Lake, you're not picking Slavs, so... That's true. Yeah, you won't want Indians for Nomad. You won't want Indians for Team Islands. Yeah, I think it's either Slavs or Indians here. And then, hmm, civ drafts are really tricky, guys. And they only have 30, civil, uh, 30 seconds, not 30 civs, but. And we don't have, the problem for a lot of this is, especially with the balance changes, um, we don't have a lot of 2v2 experience to work off, right? So teams are coming up with their own strategies. Yeah. Um, and new strategies that we've never seen before and civ combinations we've never seen before. So it's, uh, it's difficult for everyone to anticipate what's going to happen. My massive respect goes to all the teams because going into this tournament, I was not sure what the preparation would be like. But anytime you have a, a big prestigious event where they know a lot of people are watching and there's a lot of prize pool to fight for, the preparation is just off the charts. Um, I've spoken to like Miguel for Brazil, and it seems like he's played every team multiple times. I was speaking to Chris uh, two days ago, and he's like, hey, I have to go. I have two sets of training matches with other teams coming up. So, like, Oh, God. Uh, Tristan, you're going to love this. The game is up. We got a minute and 20 seconds until it starts here. And I see it, too. So Spain will have Incas Lithuanians. What? They're saving Goths, and then Chris will no have Byzantines. Japanese. And Hera will have Slavs. Huh. Interesting. Right. Uh, all the civilizations that the teams have picked on their draft are on the screen. They don't pick any more than that. The people asking those questions, but we have 50 seconds, Dave. How important is it for Canada to win on this home map? Super important. You don't want to go, I think you don't want to go into a Team Islands game. I, mm. I think you can confidently go into Nomad against Spain, and maybe we'll see Slam Chris being picked because they're both good Nomad players, but I yeah. don't think you want to go into a Team Islands game against, against Tatooine and Land. Um, yeah, where you need to win out. That's just that. That's very tough. I think it's just too difficult at that point because yeah. the teams are so close to fall behind two zero. Um, what's is the strat though? Japanese task. and Slavs? Is it like double man at arms or like what's going on here? Well, it's tricky, right? Because if you want to drush, you can only make two militia as any of these civilizations, and that's because yeah. the lack of gold in the middle. So I actually. I kind of feel like they were expecting Goths on Chaos Pit because a lot of teams were picking that. And then maybe they felt like in Imp, Slavs and Japanese are just much better. But... They must have a strategy, though. They picked the map. Exactly. 
I think they might have got mind gamed a little bit, but is it that classic case? As we see a pause now, immediately for Canada. Gilly and I were talking about this. <laughs> we we feel like strategic pauses, if that is what this is, it might be a hotkey thing. Uh, might need to go in the future. But yeah, um, big thing, Dave, is maybe do you want to pick Gots even if it's expected? Because it's not so good on other maps and so very strong on this one. We'll mm. see. Um, in the red, we have Tato. Played very good game one. Got the win for his team. He's Incas. Teamed up with Lan, who had an amazing game when he was untouched most of the time, as we have another pause. This is probably a hotkey issue. Yeah. Um, Hera's up against Lan, who's slabs, and then we have Chris, who loves his Byzantines, but he's Japanese. <laughs> I always forget that, uh, for some reason, I always thought Chaos Pit had, like, one tile of gold in the middle, but there's nothing here. No. I always forget that. So you're going to have to make a market if you want that <laughs> early gold income for some archers or men-at-arms in Feudal Age. I actually Unlikely. saw that. I actually saw someone make a market. I forget who it was. Sell wood for gold so they could get man at arms. I think it was Finland A against Finland B last weekend. It was pretty crazy. All right. So, um, thought process here for Spain is a little bit more straightforward for me. I think we're going to see Tato go for towers and Billrush because Inca villagers are affected by infantry blacksmith upgrades and Inca towers are cheaper and there's a lot of stone. And then I think we're going to have Lan play as standard as can be on this map and go for a lot of scouts. And that's probably what Hera will do too. I'm kind of confused on what Chris will do. Maybe he could still go for skirms and spearmen with Japanese. Hmm. Um, I'm just wondering why Japanese? Well, he might want Byzantines for water, I suppose. Yeah, I know, but... It's it's a bit it's, confusing. It's not because... just a question of Byzantines or Japanese. It's just why Japanese. Yeah, wouldn't... I'm sure we'll find out soon. You might want Japanese on water over Byzantines, anyways. So that's the argument to make against that. Um, I will point out, guys, that if you're watching on Twitch, there is an extension. I think it's top rightish on your screen, and if you enable it, you can actually look at all the information for the civilizations the teams are playing with. Type a one in chat if you've been using that, because uh, I'm kind of curious, but. We added that, and you can use that for the remainder of the tournament, and it can be quite nice if, if uh, Dave and I don't have all the time in the world to talk about the Civ bonuses. No one is building their lumber camp one tile away. And a re is called. Okay. By, looks like by Canada. Okay, so I have a theory about this. So this is not the player's fault, by the way. Well, I don't know. It's not really a big deal. But for whatever reason, when the new patch came out, even though we were given access to the old patch, when USA tried to play their games... All the hotkeys were changed for some of our players. Yeah. And that also happened to others as well. So I think there, because Chris is a vill behind, his create villager hotkey was broken for some reason, and they're calling the restart before four minutes because of that. So uh, one restart per best of five, and that's Canada's. Fortunately, that's there, um, if nothing else, just because of that bug. Are you sure, though? Are you sure they just didn't load into the game and then see, oh, no, Incas? <laughs> yeah, but you can't think about it. You can't change your sieve, so you're stuck with your sieves regardless, and the map no, is know, almost always like, the same. <laughs> if, you're, if you're not thinking, if you're thinking for sure they're going for a different sieve combination, and then you see it, and your game plan is kind of messed up, then you maybe pause at the beginning to talk it out. But, yeah, I don't know why you would pause twice. I, if We're kind of just pure speculation, right? Yeah, now. if he wasn't behind by a vill... I would have other theories, but I think that might have been it. Um, but yeah, they'll restart, same sieve, same map. And the only thing that could really change is berry positions, deer positions, and players might be versus another. Like, maybe that's part of the logic, Dave, if they genuinely called a restart. But teams very rarely are going to call a restart just because they're on the wrong side or something. It's, it's a very iffy thing. Um, I won't spoil and i'd like twitch chat i know we have eleven thousand or ten thousand people so it's tough i won't spoil at all uh for the previous set because we will do a rerun later guys so either look at the vod look at the results and spoil it for yourself or try not to encourage people in chat to do that i'm restarting what an my upset, game upset though <laughs> <laughs> yeah what an upset <laughs> god what an amazing upset <laughs> they'll be looking at those two teams like china and finland I was... upset <laughs> Huh? Well played, well played. 
I've been really happy with the amount of people making reruns. I know that it's not extremely common across all channels on Twitch. Yeah, you get crazy. You get like 800, 900, 1,000 people during a rerun. It's yeah, nice. it's, it's cool, man, because, you know, people have busy lives and they live all over the world. And it's cool to see the interest there and people can, can discuss things. And we're back in. Um, this should be different. Yes, it is. So it's now Tato versus... Oh, that, sorry, Tato with Lan. What am I talking about? Tato against Hera, and then we have Chris against Lan, and my apologies for the speed. This is live, and we're all caught up now, Dave. It's kind of, you know, Chaos Pit. It's kind of everyone versus everyone, though, isn't it? Yeah, true, Like, you're true. so close. It doesn't really matter who your guy is. Um, I think that's the thought process, too. I think Tato is going to try and do what he can to delay both Canadians, while Lan will play as standard as possible and try and mask out, and if he can freely get to Castle Age, wreck with Knights. That's probably the line of thinking they're going for. Hera actually went forward super early with his scout, and Hera's not putting his lumber oh. camp on the outside wood line. Wait a second. He did last game, but he's not this game. So... He might actually spot the villagers from land, too. No. Here's what it. happens every time I've seen someone build a lumber camp close by, because you need to chop to the outer ring in most situations, so you place the lumber camp here. But if you place it here... It's either a drush, because you want wood fast for that, or it's a TC drop, which I Ooh, highly doubt Chris Hera and Hera, do. Chris and Hera are both there on the wood line from land. Oh, they could have potentially picked a villager. Yeah, got uh, Hera did force Loom at least. Land researched that and seemed to have told Tato to pay attention. Tato's just on straggler trees for now, and Tato's pushing in all of his deer. So high scout activity for Canada and more of an eco approach for Spain as they're pushing in the food. Yeah, Tato only has four on stragglers. It's interesting, and Hera, like, dude, Hera's on his last water buffalo. He hasn't found the other one, and he hasn't pushed any deer. This is really bad then, and you just used a re, so. It's like, w w they're looking for the outside lumber placements, but they're not finding anything, and it's just delaying his economy so much. Did he not scout the front of his base first? Look at his scouting. He probably no, had a he, buffalo he went there. To, he went to Tato's base first. They were running yeah. around at the beginning of the game. Like I, I'm not. I wasn't paying too close attention to what was happening with the water buffaloes, but it almost looks like Hera did not prioritize scouting the front of his base. Lost one or two that should have been his. And watch, as you said he's gonna try and bring it back. And Tato, oh, Tato's just a second too late to try and snipe that. But now the villager from Hera is under threat. And Tato is now with land, so Spain decided to. Worry about the economy and now work on grouping up with the scouts, Dave. It's really just not the greatest eco from Harry. He's just now mm -hmm. pushing his first deer. Yeah, it, it's a high risk, high reward situation, right? And they they took Still the risk. Still no loom too. Still no loom as there's two scouts here and Lan is on the way to feudal age. Lan will be there first and things are looking good for Spain so far. Chris with Japanese, remember. So Japanese, what will they do? We have three Dark Age farms for Chris. Doesn't look like it's his plan to go for Oh my for... god, Chris! What? <laughs> Just Hera pushing... That's the third attempt Hera's made to push that deer, and at the last second, Chris runs in front of it, so it doesn't <laughs> go under the TC. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of funny. I wasn't paying Just... attention to that. I'm just trying to figure out what Chris is doing here. Actually, oh, it's just an insane uptime from land. Land is going to be going 18 population scouts. This is nuts. All right, Dave. Everyone's on the way to feudal except for Hera. Hera would have wanted Hera's a faster uptime. Yeah. Forever Dark Age. I mean, like, he failed the, the push twice with his scout. In addition to wandering around the entire map at the beginning of the game and not finding his, his no other reward. water buffalo. It was yeah. Dark Age in game one as well, which was a big question mark for Hera. Like, having his goats far away from his TC, the man just doesn't like food. Chris is close to being through uh, the outer wood line. Yeah. And we're lo I'm looking at the other player. Land is not very close, and Tato is not very close at all. So Chris is going to be the first one through. I think Tato doesn't care too much about that. He is here with villagers. He's Incas. Inca villagers affected by blacksmith upgrade. Spain have completely walled in their wood lines. They're safe in case attacks come. There's the blacksmith, and Hera is in Dark Age, Dave. 
Yeah, and he doesn't see this at all. And he doesn't also didn't build a lumber camp on the outer ring, so it's not like he can yeah. escape. He might be well, trapped he can escape in here. through Chris's when Chris uh, chops through. They're not too far apart. I'm so confused, honestly. Like from the start, I've been confused with Canada. At what does Hera even do? He cannot fight the villagers. That's simply not an option. Unless he wants to lose the villagers, that is. I don't know what the strategy is here. I'm in the same either. boat as you. Like, I haven't seen anything from them. Chris uh, is making spears. spearmen. Ja Japanese spearmen. And, and Tato will finish that tower. He's attacking with villagers. Look at the grouping with the scouts. Scouts also contributing from Canada as they come over here. And Hera's Hera cannot take wood moment. right now. Hera cannot take any wood. Yeah. And what a weird decision. I'm 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 baffled, man. Like Canada played this very well in the group stage against Finland B. They had a strategy, it made sense. But to not push in your resources. All, all these things seem so bad. Chris is attacking that villager from Tato. So he might get that pick off. Let's see if Hera can recover and if Chris can send some help. Who's adding a range now? So it seems like just trash build, spearmen skirmishers. If those scouts ever decide to leave Hera's base too, and go and hit Chris's wood lines, it could be he could be in trouble. Yeah. Hera cannot contribute with anything except defensive towers, but you need wood for defensive towers. Wood that he does have now if he wants to build one. I have to say I thought Tato would do a little more here with this push too. Um, and Land doesn't have many scouts just yet, so there are positives for Canada. Hera has a spearman and snipes a scout. That's two scouts I've seen go down for land so far. Yeah, a bit wasteful from him. I think he lost one to the tower and then loses another one there. He's only got three on the field. And there are spearmen all over the place for Canada. Maybe this maybe the strategy is just, I don't know, focus on eco and make spearmen in defense. Yeah, I mean, fine. it's it's interesting now because Hera working and on... And Hera's going to take out that tower? And he's also taken out a villager. That's two that's gone down for Tato. Tato now is, has the lowest vill count in the game. And we've just went from being confused by Canada to thinking, what were Spain doing with their advantage? <laughs> <laughs> I think Land tossed away a couple scouts for free, but yeah. like, it just seems like a really solid defense for Hera from what he had in the bank. It looked like he couldn't do anything, but he managed to get those defensive towers up and Chris is safe at home. Oh, he says solid defense. He's back on wood, but he doesn't have a stable. He's not making any military. He's just now getting the wood upgrade. This pressure's probably going to go over towards Chris, and, and there's not really any support coming, which is a problem. But we'll see, man. As Lan has six scouts, almost all on full HP. Chris going with heavy defensive spearmen for now. And Chris is through. Chris is already through the wood line. Very good focus chopping from him. And Chris is actually at the wood line from Land looking for opportunities. Land's about to be through as well. Land right next to a gold, which is good fortune there. We see another tower from Tato. Uh, certainly mission accomplished if he wanted to delay Hera. Uh, they weren't able to do as much as they would have wanted Spain, but Fletching now on the way as well. An upgrade that Hera will not have, and I'm still unsure on what Hera is doing with his resources. <laughs> The army Chris has on the field right now. He's got 13 military. It's all skirms and spearmen. Yeah, I know, but like, why pick Japanese for this instead of Byzantine? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's what's weird. He's going to loop around with his other army of spearmen and skirmishers, try and hit uh, Tato's base. He's doing, you know what? The, the towers from Chris, the spearmen from Chris at home. Yeah, it's, it's just good work. It's forcing some indecision from, from Tato and Land. They don't know where to go. I'd say what's really bad is the fact that his eco looks in... Not so good. He's getting wheelbarrow with four on four. Oh, he's looping around a wall. Uh, Lan in. Lan's wall. already out, though. Lan in. Oh, but does Lan... Will Lan get out, Dave? He's just placed an outpost there. Lan needs to react. Tato using villagers against the spearmen, which are problematic for the scouts. Lan has a lot to do right now. He'll try and place the blacksmith. Will he hear the noise? You can't... Okay, you just heard the noise? Because he can't build it? Will he go through? Walls, Chris. That's what you need. Yep, yep. He's going through with the villagers. All right, Dave, on the other side, villagers still fighting, scouts still around, and it looks like Lan can take that gold, and he could kill those villagers from Chris. Still waiting to see something from Hera. He, he's just farming right now. 
But I suppose on the bright side for Canada, Chris has not lost many villagers. He just needs to make sure these scouts don't get oh, out. Oh no, oh no, those scouts cannot get through there. Chris, oh boy. They're through. They are through. He also is not doing much out here except chopping that's wood. That's, that's an ouchers right there. He has these two vills in the south, and some scouts will surely loop around for that. And what the problematic thing is right now for Team Canada, I think, is that Lan has 15 farms. You have Hera, 14, but no military just yet. So I don't know if I don't Hera... Think... Chris had the outpost, but I don't think he knows those scouts are there. Look, he's building a tower on that goal, Oh, man. God. Oh, that's so bad. That is so bad. Spearman's coming over. This is not what Canada would have wanted after already losing the first game. Villagers dying everywhere now. Another great game from Land Dave as he kills three villagers there. Excuse me, two. And then there's one to kill in the south. Like, at least with Chris, we can see a strategy, right? Whether whether we think it's a good one or not, yeah. it's trash units, get out to the outside quickly, defend yourself. But with Hera, like... 19 minute scouts. What's happening? 19 yeah. minute scouts. So I know Tato didn't kill a lot, but it still feels like he's, he's done a lot. And whoa, I just realized Lan has 750 freaking stone. <laughs> what the? Dude, did he forget he had 10 villagers on stone or what? Holy. Lithuanians. He should he should honestly sell about 400 of that and buy food so we can go cast it. Well, he's sending, look what he's doing. He's sending two villagers around. He's going to have his scouts on the right-hand side too. Uh, so yep, two he's around. maybe going to build some towers along the wood line or maybe wait till castle age and build a castle. He looks like he sold a bunch of it, actually. Yeah, he actually sold four or five hundred. Uh, he'll want to go into knights. Hera, not on gold yet because the lumber camps were delayed. He couldn't chop through. He also can't comfortably go through Chris's side as Chris's side is as messy as ever. Um, I actually think what Lan wants to do is wall this side or sneak villagers through to the corner, one or the other. But Lan could raid with knights and hit Chris's farm eco. He could hit Hera's farm eco. This is a game Tato's where... Tato's towering Hera's wood, too. Um, Kind of awkward for Tato to do this with no military, though. Like... Well, it... not kind of awkward on the farms. Not awkward behind the wood line. Hera's got nothing behind there. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. So the, the one on the left might even be just like a distraction tower, to be honest. Yeah. So you can get the one behind the wood line up. The scouts are going to snipe this villager. And don't tell me, if that gate completes, it's a disaster for Canada because it'll open. Oh my god! You're kidding me! No way. Lan will keep the gate open. And what a play that is, because now he can slaughter the villagers and still keep some presence on the outer ring. What a heads-up play from Lan. And everything that could go wrong is going wrong for Canada. Canada, excuse me. This is absolutely awful. As a Canadian, I am <laughs> appalled. <laughs> We always need the, the Canadian perspective. Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, Chris is on the way up. Hera having an awful game by his standards. Just now getting forging. So he can have some something to fight with. Spearmen and scouts. Tato's completely happy with this position. He knows that Lan should carry from here, but let's see if Lan can actually do that. Hera's fully committing here with the scouts and the, the villagers against this tower position. He's also got four spears. Yeah. So Tato could lose this actually pretty easily. I think Tato has kind of done enough and he should really focus on his economy now. Uh, his economy's garbage, Dave. Look at that. His economy is really, really bad. Plus, he's well, been fighting he's had, with bills. He's had like 12 villagers for this entire game. So yeah. look, and he's going to lose some underneath the tower from Hera. Okay, if Hera can kill all of these villagers coming forward from Tato, that's like minus nine, minus ten. And what he's was gonna have Tato scouts on the thinking? field. This Why? is an overcommitment. He already had a good position. Yeah. Dave, knights are on the way. Lan is on two TCs. Keep an eye on Lan's bill count throughout this because while he is being really annoyed by Chris, Lan is clearly in a good position. So good of a position that Hera could fall further behind, and Hera's all in feudal making scouts and spearmen right now. Knights and spearmen and towers should counter that if the numbers are there. This will lead Chris to have to send some support. Chris will be in Castle Age soon. Chris has definitely been making military, but it's a lot of trash. He won't have many knights. No real counterattack like, for Canada. I look back at like the gold from land. 
This is <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Watching Spearmen just poke villagers on the other side of the map. Well, they're going to die now, and Chris will have wanted to keep some of those alive, even though he kills a vill somehow. Look at Hera's base. Hera can't get out to the outer ring. <laughs> Tato's towering everywhere. He even has a tower now on that gold where Chris is. Hera's stuck in Chaos Pit, and there's knights, spearmen, and towers. This is one of Hera's biggest nightmares. <laughs> yep. I mean, he's got 12 scouts, and that without even without bloodlines soon. Yeah, Lance he's got is double checking because no he thought there were more villagers there. And, and Hera... look at Hera coming out. The people have spoken. They're rebelling against the towers, man. All right. All meanwhile, economy. four villagers die. Seems so brutal for Canada land with 52 villagers. Even Tato. Tato's looking at 45. Despite all the struggles he's had. Is there anything to stop land from taking out Hera's town center right now? Uh, I think you can't underestimate the power of like this many scouts. Like they'll still do damage to the knights, right? Yeah, Plus yeah. the TC fire. I think he can defend that position. It's just going to cost him in idle time and villagers mm -hmm. off the farms. What happened to that stone that land had? Taking engagement. He just sold it, I think. I think he, he made some stone walls on TCs the right, too. too. Yeah, he's on three TCs, so. That is a lot of scouts for Hera. Uh, very similar situation to game one, where the Canadians fell behind, but they're also doing a great job to survive. That's just been a bit wasteful with villagers. Look at these two next to the market. All right, he still has 47, down. and Chris has been losing like crazy on the other, the outside of the ring. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Lan has been everywhere, just like game one. What a performance from him. But here comes Chris with a bit of a counter. The first counter attack we've seen. Just two knights, and Lan reacts and will lose a villager and be very okay with that. The knights are now hitting Chris's base. Chris loses the pikemen. Chris has to abandon the farms. Chris has not been able to expand his eco. And look at the walls that Spain have. They have cut off 75% of the outer ring from Canada. Wow. Dave, I almost can't believe that Spain are dominating this hard. Well, I can believe it with just the strategy choice I've seen from Team Canada. That was True. very, very suspect. Yeah, man. Yeah, you look at the lack of a game plan for the Canadians, and then the great execution from Spain. Hera, I think we should go back and count how many mining camps and lumber camps he's built throughout this game. He's not Japanese. They're not cheap. He's had to relocate so many. And Lan repositioning again. It's like Canada just cannot keep up with the pressure from Lan, who's sitting at 65 villagers and will kill five more at Chris's base. Yep. They oh. can they can wipe Tato off the map and they'd still struggle yeah. to kill Lan. Lan is, is getting one relic too, so that's extra attack coming in for Lithuanians. Team Canada already down a game. And this was their first home map pick, and it is not... It, it's not winnable from here. I don't see how no. it is, Dave. No, Hera's stuck in Feudal Age forever. Um, Chris's economy is nowhere near lands, and his military production is nowhere near lands. Chris is actually... Chris knows this game is over. Yeah. <laughs> Look at lands base. <laughs> Chris is going for the castle placement. This is a do-or-die castle right here. What would doubt do? <laughs> Yep. Um, let's I, see. I'd delete that and put that a little bit farther forward, to be honest. Oh, wait, the stable's going to block it? Okay, no, it's the other way around. The castle blocks the stable. Hey, he does have Japanese pikemen. This is going to be awkward for Lan. He does have so many villagers, and I don't think that's a fight he'll want to take with those knights. Yeah, he doesn't, like, you don't really care, though. You just move those to your eco at the back. He kind He's of getting care, relics, but, too, with, yeah. with Lithuanians, so... Hera He's still have strong knights. struggling. Look at Tato, Spearman and Towers, so attentive to that. Tato is also on the way to Castle Age and can go into Eagles, but also contribute with some Slingers, possibly. I'm trying to, to stay updated on Hera's farm count because of the lack of wood. He's in nine farms right now. He has more farms abandoned than actually working. Still has Got been enough to unable drop a castle. to get to oh, the wait. outer ring. Yeah. Still in Feudal Age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right, Dave. Lan just abandons the his situation in the middle with some of those farmers and goes to the outer ring where he's more than fine. And he'll actually start to raid as well. Um, stable there on that right side. And also a monk over there. He'll be well aware that Chris is still there. 
Getting resources. When does Canada decide to call this? Or can Chris maybe do something with this little maybe push? Maybe Tato gets the castle and they call it. Yeah. I don't know. Well, they, what they don't know is that land is this far ahead in eco. Um, Hera's probably hoping that Chris has a few TCs running, but land has stopped that from happening. Land's doing so much. He's been incredible today. He's going in to get this relic, which will be relic number two for him. Actually, no, he already has two relics. That'll be relic number three. And the GG's called. The score's 2-0. And Canada looked clueless there. I'm really disappointed in whatever they tried to do. I, I think Hera's plan was like, I'll go forward with my scout early and I'll, I'll take at least a water buffalo or, or something. Yeah. And then he just spent, they spent so much time wandering around and his eco got so far behind. In terms of food count, he got up to feudal so late, and by the time he was in feudal, when he hit feudal, Tato already had two towers on him. Yeah, both wood lines as well. He wasn't able to contribute with scouts to 19 minutes. That obviously was not the game plan, but because of the proper execution in Dark Age into feudal for Spain, they were able to set Hera back to that degree. And I'm I'm looking at this now as a series that is going to be tough for Canada to win. Spain has shown that they are so strong, and Canada have to win three straight. Otherwise, they are out of the tournament. Uh, here's the, the total resources, the total KD land with 67 units killed. He had more of every resource except stone. Everybody had over 1,300 stone in that game, which is kind of funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's so much stone in the middle, and I think they mined through all of it. Um, but yeah, Dave, there's not, much, there's not much more to say. You want to go into a game and execute your best strategies and that was not it for canada no especially on a home map pick that, that looked like it was spain's home map and canada was just wondering what to do to counter it yep it was really weird like why maybe they have a grand plan for byzantines which is there on your screen so yeah. they could go let's say they win the series and they they win a game with byzantines then we don't question them anymore but when chris used byzantines so well in this tournament on that map with skirmishers and spearmen and then they pick japanese and they make skirmishers and spearmen i don't understand it but we have to move on the final home map for canada will be ghost lake the expectation if you've been following canada and, and how their team tends to set up is that will be slam again with hera do or die they need to win Aaron needs to pull something out of the hat here because if i were to pick a weak link for team canada in both those losses i would say it was hera in both games he has some fantastic moments, yeah. but I'd say, like, the early game, there was something something just a little bit off. I mean, in both games, his Dark Age was a disaster. Mm -hmm. He tossed away goats in game one, and then this time he didn't collect water buffalo and didn't push in any deer. So it's and actually... then he had to fight back, fight yeah. his way back. He did a fantastic job fighting his way back into both games. Yeah. But, like... You just get you get so far behind, and then your ally is constantly coming over to help, right? And you need to yeah. be you need to have the initiative in two v two. It's so big, momentum is such a huge deal in two v two. It was a combination of him handicapping himself and then being doubled in two straight games. Um, if it's Hera again, which it obviously will be, I think Hera goes Indians here, because you still you want to save civilizations for future games, and those future games will be played on Team Islands or Nomads. So I think you go Indians, Britons. This is pretty clear. Indians, Scouts, and the Camels are just Camels. Britons, you probably want Crossbowmen. Uh, and Britons are one of the best civs on this map. Slam is one of the best Archer players. Game one, he was a beast. Dave Canada just, just couldn't pull out the win with them. I'm hoping. And I think... I, I, hope, I just hope we'll see something more coordinated <laughs> not even more coordinated more focused from the canadians yeah here in this third game uh, from the spaniards it's been super impressive mm -hmm. lan has played out of his mind dude lan looks like the best player in the two games so far yeah i know it's, it's pretty incredible it, it's like tato distracting for the team being annoying and obviously it took a lot of skill to do everything he's done so far today but lan with that carry role um Someone asked in Twitch chat earlier, and I'm not able to get to all questions, but don't you want your best player as the night player? And I think it largely depends. Like, for Canada, you have Hera going for scouts into knights. 
um, that works for them usually. And then you have Norway. I think you've had Viper, who's probably Norway's best player, going a lot for the archer role. It really depends. And uh, Land probably not the best one v one player, but he has been helped by Tato's amazing display with his archer role. Or I guess you know villagers, one or the other. Yeah, players have preferences too. Like Tato has always been kind of an archer guy. I I, I believe in team games. Um, so is Slam. I have Hera's, a prediction Hera's here. Hera's more flex flexible. I think we see Cummins, Dave. Okay. Because, um, I, I mean, I guess whatever. I can I say stuff now. Uh, in training games I've seen, and also training games that I've done myself, since Ghost Lake can tend to be so wallable, you can go for a lot of Palisades can and go two TCs. Maybe? And then I think you combine that with... Or Vikings? Vietnamese or Vikings? Well, let's see. Or do you say Vikings for, for Team Islands? I think Team Islands, we'll see Vikings and Malay for Spain. So I don't know. You go Cummins, Vietnamese, that might make the most sense, yeah. All right. But you cannot play for just one win here. Like, the Canadians, they they came to win today. Uh, they're definitely not going to be happy with getting a win here and then losing the rest. They want to plan for the future. Hmm. You know, it's interesting because looking at the schedule, like the sets, oh, and I should God, probably slow down. Sims, dude. <laughs> oh, you see the sieves? Land sim. <laughs> no way. Dude, that's a combo, man. That's a combo meal and a half. What? <laughs> They're going goths here? I spoke to Miguel. And Miguel, who teams up with Lan, uh, often with Dogal, and obviously they can't in the World Cup because they're in different countries. And Miguel said, I think Lan is going to learn a lot from teaming with Tato. And maybe this is a bit of Tato mind games when Goths was expected in the previous game to not pick them. And then go Goths and Koomans here. What in the, what is going to happen here? Uh, that's that's well, you, kind of a weird combo, dude. It's just like, what do you, what do you do? Kip, Kip check. But night <laughs> what have gods make but what's really weird is what do indians and britons do against full huskar or halb spam yeah if they can get there, if though. they can get there exactly That's yeah the problem and gods will have the higher hp palisade walls now let's see if that doesn't get stone walls it's definitely against meta for spain but for canada Hera's going to be going for stable units and slam's going to be going for archers the, like for everyone saying like oh we know what the goths will do they'll make husk girls it's like it's incredibly difficult yep. to get there and yep. not have either you or your teammate die before you get to that point yeah I and mean, we're getting ahead of ourselves obviously britons can make champions but then cummins can make paladins <laughs> so do yeah. you want to to let it get to the point where goths can flood at you i don't think so but questions will be asked of Canada here because there's almost a guarantee that Tata will gain a villager lead with Cummins and the two TCs in Feudal. It's something you know is coming, but it's very hard to counter at times. I just can't, like, imagine the Canadian comms right now in yeah. voice chat. Like, yep. goth? <laughs> what? What is happening? And it was probably the same for the Spaniards when they saw Japanese from, yeah. <laughs> from Canada in the previous game. So, um, you know, maybe things not going as planned for all teams. Tata in the red. Feeling really good for his team. Playing as the Cummins and then Land in the yellow. What a beast he's been today uh, playing as the Goths. In the green, we have Hera. Hera's playing as the Indians. And then in the blue, we have Slam. Slam playing as the Britons. The Britons top tier here. Uh, there's extra sheep in the middle. Britons do eat sheep faster. They also have the most range on their crossbows. The cheapest town centers. The list goes on and on. What needs to go right for Canada here, Dave? Let's not talk about what's gone wrong. What needs to go right for Canada Get the in momentum. this game? Get the momentum because they haven't had the momentum in either of the previous two games. True. They need they need to have the initiative. Like they need to be knocking on the door of Spain's economy and forcing the fights near Spain's bases. You're right. Every single game, it's been Canada reacting. Yep. And uh, they haven't been able to find a way back from those situations. Game one, very long, but still couldn't do it. Now, what's fascinating is Slam is up against Tato, and it's expected that Tato would go for fast feudal into two town centers. So Slam either should go fast castle himself and say, or not fast castle, but, um, or excuse me, back up. He should go fast castle while Tato goes fast feudal, 
or maybe Canada could get that momentum by focusing everything they have on land while Tata's booming. Difficult though. Cuman boom is so, so scary. Like they'll just be 30 villagers straight up ahead yeah. of you if you leave them alone. The thought process when we were training here was it would be more than fine for the non cumin player to get doubled because if that person loses 10 bills, Cumin's probably are going to have a 20 or 30 bill lead and they can just yeah. they can win on their own. So yeah, it's tough to know what to do. I'm really curious if Land's going to do any funky forward business since Scots have that free loom. That happens in 1v1s, but he hasn't sent any bills forward. I like the generation of this uh, World Cup goes like, it's so much more open than the regular one. Yeah. And like th with the main golds, almost always, it seems like they're always forward. I don't know if that's part of the yep, they are. They are. generation, but it's, it's really cool. It, it puts pressure on all the players. And what I like about it is it invites people to play passive. Like, oh, okay. Uh, you've, you got, you've got the wall potential, but yeah. you might not have your main gold. Yeah, it's really fun. What do gods do here, Dave? Do gods go archers? Do gods go scouts? Do gods go That's fast the castle? Question. I'm sure they have an answer. Yeah. But we're, I think everyone's asking that question right now. Everyone uh, like who watches the game regularly anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure there's some guy playing against computer going like, <laughs> spam, hoss <laughs> girls. <laughs> <laughs> Infantry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting little situation there. Uh, Hera looking to steal the sheep. He needs this. Revenge. He's going to get four sheep. Karma. He'll get them too if he stays close <laughs> enough to them. Karma, dude. Oh, stay closer or kill them. Or do right. something. Well, there he we got go. two, and that's also villager idle time for land. Land won't like that. And remember, Goths don't really, other than the free loom, they don't really have much of an eco bonus. So mm -hmm. every sheep that you take away from them is quite quite good, especially when you're Indians. You have yeah. cheaper villagers. I think Goths are probably the most imbalanced in the game, and I think it will always be like this because this is how it goes. You either die really really hard or you kill everything with very little yeah. in between so i suppose cumins could be the same though dave the boom either works or it doesn't with no in between very rarely do you like see you, games you, with cumins go late you die a lot slower with cumins though it's a more agonizing death yeah <laughs> like yeah with gods you know you just get, get the gu guillotine and <laughs> you're done right your mm -hmm. eco gets raided and there's no potential to come back but slams going drush fc know. dave so he knows that the guy on his side is going to be going fast feudal. Feels like feudal pressure might not be worth it. It's a pretty so. clean build from Slam too. Good good wall timing from him. He's only got three villagers building them. He's gonna be up in time. He's gonna have the drush yeah, over at Red's clean. Eco at a perfect time. This is really nice for Slam. Yeah, and there were no real question marks over Slam's performance so far today. Only playing in game one, of course, but Slam's played good and this is what you put him in the team for. I say that as he Okay, there we go. He's going to find the walls and Tato. I mean, where do you, where does that second TC go for Tato? Um, you know, I was going to say the gold, Difficult. but then you don't have farm space. Yeah. It's just like, look at this hill. Yeah. This massive hill is going to prevent TCs from going over there. Speaking of Drush, here comes the Drush from LAN on Hera, who is also going fast castle and is now Good making walls. defensive militia. And he got pop capped really badly. Like how's, the barracks isn't working. The TC isn't working. He has to get loom anyways. So it could have been worse for him. But I guess this is a reaction to the Drush, and he too will try and go for some type of an FC. Interesting. I kind of like to see Land make more than just three militia. Because Hera's only going to make three to match three. But then again, Hera would just wall everything out. So... I think Tato is showing us where he'll place the TC, Dave. It looks like he'll place it on the wood line next to the stone. Yeah. Maybe Kip checks in this game from Kumins. Hey. Slam not over there with the Drush, and he's just going to keep attacking walls from Tato. Yeah, honestly, it's it's fine. Um, I really wish Slam would be taking the deer right now. Um, I feel like it's a good invitation to do so, and a lot of players would... Like if this was Viper, he'd already have four here with a mill. <laughs> in a ranked game anyways, but... Um, that's that's a lot of food and it's safe within his walls. I'm surprised he's not taking it. Apart from that, we're just looking at the two drushers. Um, but drush fast castle into what? Into just booming maybe if you're land? I have no clue. And Harris Harris drush has forced to be defensive. Yeah. As well. 
which is probably not what he wanted. We were talking about taking the initiative, right? That's yeah. a bad way to start. Also, he's outnumbered because Slam does not have his scout here to help. And Tato's scout is a few late scout, so there's a lot more potency to this attack. Eva really has to think twice about every decision he makes right now. I, I like how he's like, he's walling up behind this though, finishing those walls yeah. at the front while the Drush is at the back. He's going to the gold. Like, Harris seems very unconcerned about this. I'm sure there's some concern, but he's so good. He should be able to deal with this. Uh, that is good micro though from Lan and Tato. Good house wall too. Uh, is it though? No. Come on. Always a hole. Yeah, always a hole, and that could lead to a dead villager, Dave. Uh, Spain seemed content with attacking the Vils. I'm trying to double check here. There's a doink, and villager goes down, and Harris scout. Second one, maybe, too. Oh, Second two villager. Vils. That's disaster, and Slam's just now arriving with his scout. He was too far away. And the scout, too. Hera can't even see what Land's going for. That is just... This just sums up the series today for Canada. They cannot withstand the early pressure from Spain. Sums up the series for Hera as well. Just kind of like under committing to the defense. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's like he, he stays alive after... Oh, woo, woo, woo. Oh, the wolf got one. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. The wolf just killed more than Hera did so far, but... um. Team... <laughs> the real Team Canada, the wildlife. Let's go. <laughs> um, poor Hera. Um, but anyways... I feel like he does a really good job when they fall behind, but you know you want to gain that lead. Speaking it just of seems a lead, like an, somewhat of an off day for him. And to credit to Spain, they're putting tons of pressure on him. Nah, so. seriously. Like I felt like three-two Canada. You felt like three-one Canada. But yeah, I I wasn't sure how good teams would perform because they didn't have very strong tests in the group stage. So this again brings me back to Slam. What can Slam achieve? Slam is in feudal. He will be able to up soon, Dave, to the castle age with Britons, which is very, very frightening for Spain. But Tato, 34 villagers already. Don't tell me Harris is only rising. The blacksmith is delayed, so he can't click up. That villager should shouldn't be die. That. Yeah. yeah. I like how the wolf is attacking Lan. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, woo, woo, woo! That wolf got some value, dude. Oh god, I thought this is this is supposed to be Canada's home map, right? Don't they understand the snow a little bit more than the Spaniards? What? <laughs> so we know what Land's going for, by the way. Yes, he's he got, on stone. He's got five on stone. Oh, he's boy. on the way to the castle age. He's full double walled. Staying safe, and he is gonna get into Husk Girls because of that drush being so distracting on Hera and getting so much value. You have the confidence to wall up and place a castle and try to yeah. flood house girls. It's tough to know what to do here if you're Canada because on one hand, you might want to use the faster castle age to kill fast and make a lot of art. But on the other hand, you have Tato free booming, two TCs, and it might make you feel better to just go three TCs with Britons and catch up there. Um, what I do like from Slam is he scouted the fact that Lana's on the stone and he can pressure that Dave, but I don't think it will be in time because Lan will likely get to a castle and get to Huskarls at some point in this game. Also, Camel's not so good against Huskarls, and Crossbow's certainly not so good against Huskarls. No. So you're going to have to find something to deal with that unit. The Camels can just run away. Yeah. Uh, with the mobility, but you're going to want to stick near your crossbows. And if the crossbows can't deal with the husk girls and the camels can't deal with them, then you're going to run into some problems. Also, it seems really simple as Slam loses his scout, but I absolutely love how Tato housewalled and black. Another militia goes gap. down to a wolf. What? Yeah. Where? They're everywhere near uh, <laughs> Slam's walls. All right. So that's how many kills now <laughs> for militia? And then you have Slam with zero kills. And Hera with one. Slam's going into 3TC immediately, still only on one range. So he's playing it. I mean, I think this is how you have to play it against humans, to be honest, because yeah. they're already at 49 vils. Like, you got to get caught up at some point. But Dave, he you see what Slam just did? He tried to run around and flank Tato. Tato thought about that. Already had that blocked off with houses. Not palisades, houses. Which offers so much protection to him. He's also got a tower on the other wood line. Like this is, this is like uh, and back he's when, up too. I mean, you know when you first start playing the game and you make scenarios so the AI can never kill you. 
this is it right here. You know, you've got towers everywhere, house walls everywhere, more eco. This is cheating. You actually did that? I mean, a little bit, you know. All right. I give myself a lot of cataphracts and Teutonic Knights in this scenario editor. Because <laughs> they're, the, they're the best units in my eyes. So Hera is just going to go for a boom as well. He's going 3TC. Okay. I think that's a so good play. Yeah. Britons and Indians booming versus humans and Goths. Goths. Interesting. Tato feels like he's safe. However, Slam does find a potential weak point right on that house. And Tato, who is on stone, was only on stone to make defensive towers. So he actually does not have a stable yet, Dave. So he'll need some military from Lan, who is just now building the castle. He actually went for what I consider to be the meta and the correct play, going for three TCs and then the castle. But there's very little military. There goes Tato with the defensive tower. That one villager is like right on top of the other one building that castle. Yeah, what about personal space? Leave room for Jesus. What is... That's... Dave really picking up on the important things here. Since Canada... It's like, it's like, since they're, on, Canada... It's like they're on a date, you know, at a pool hall and the guy's like showing her like, no, you gotta... You gotta do it this way. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love how... Like, Canada's losing, so Dave suddenly has to find different things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to sleep tonight if we lose this game. Like, come on, man. <laughs> uh, Slam, he moved out. He's now focusing on booming back home. He wants to go for four town centers. He's at 50 vils, and Tatsu's at 56. So Canada have definitely done a good job getting the eco right. Hera hasn't even made a single camel, as far as I can see. And maybe he'll oh, go he's... for four TCs as well. I feel like that's a, that's the best call, though, going for more TCs, because what are you yeah. going to do against Goss and Castle Age, especially when you know that he's oh, double God. walled? Dave, look what Tato's doing. Oh, my God. This is brilliant from Spain. Tato's researching coinage. He is going to sling Goths. With and human eco. Oh, my God. Land could just go imp. He could make... If he's receiving enough sling, he could just go Halbin Huskarl before the Canadians are even in the Imperial Age. This is brilliant strategy from Spain, and this is why they saved Goth. He brought the Vils forward to place the barracks already. Now, if Canada spots that, they'll know there's sling, but... This is how you get Goths to Imp, isn't it? <laughs> it feels like the Britain player has to already start switching into something else. Indians just, feel useless. But it's hard to make that call, though, because you have no vision on what's going on. Wow. Dave, how many times have we seen a set with Tato, whether it's 1v1s or team games over the last five years, where you you see brilliant strategic decisions before the games even start with the Civ Draft? That's where he wins a lot of series. Yep. In the Civ Draft, in the map picks, in the strategy decisions, and the counter picks for him as well. Mm -hmm. Like, Goths and Cumans counter Britons and Indians pretty effectively. I think also a reason that Japanese might have been picked by Canada in the previous game, which didn't look like they practiced it much, was because of Goths being used on Chaos Pit very frequently. Huskarls coming out of the barracks, and Lan is not going to waste any time here producing. Um, what do I hear? Oh, I hear Militia. Okay, Hera has Militia attacking a Palisade wall. But with Anarchy in... Dude, there's a hole in Slam's wall right there on the wood line. Is there, though? I'm pretty sure there is. I guess the other thing is, does it really matter? <laughs> when Huskarls start knocking on the door here. Oh, boy. Hera can't make knights! Like, if you had knight, a knight Civ, you could be okay here. But Hera's Indians and Campbells are awful against Huskarls. Slam needs to stonewall and then some. This is never going to stop. I'm borderline. I I'm as speechless as a caster look at, look can be. Tato. And yeah. Tato's Tato. going to castle drop it too. Oh my word. He says, here you go, Lan. Here's a few resources. No, he could go ahead and cap rams. Oh my and god. And castle drop. What, this is what sick. A strategy. What a strategy choice from Spain. We were asking so many questions when this game began, and they're answering all of them. Oh my it, it's goodness. Just, it's like, what is the answer? I mean, Slam's gonna have to hold on for, what, five minutes against this before Hera has anything to help out with? And you know what? Lan might do the same thing to Hera, dude. He's sending villagers over to Hera's side. Wow. Unbelievable. This is like, it feels like 
Spain knew exactly what Canada would go for with their civilizations, and they also knew exactly what would be expected of them. And so they flipped the scripts. Rams are on the way. Slam is getting kills, but eventually this is going to break. And Hera needs to send help, and what do you even send as Indians? I don't know. Champions. Supplies! He's going to go champions. Their best hope. But he needs, like I said, he needs like five minutes. Hey, he's still got those two militia. Sorted. The militia and will be Tato, upgraded. Tato actually, oh, that's such a good play from Tato. Adding a Manganel behind us before the capped Rams. Yeah. Just to prevent the walling behind. They're through. And now Lan is through, and nothing Slam has can stop these Husk girls. I mean, a castle helps. But Land should just go. What I like about this too is that Land still has his own eco. But Land should just go all in Castle Age here. They can mix in Rams. There is potential for Hera though. Hera has 92 villagers and he is going for champions, which would counter Huskarl. But will it be in time? Slam needs to work magic here to survive yeah. until Hera gets here. Honestly, you could you could think about sending your resources to Hera. Like, I think my immediate response would be send all the food to Hera so Hera can actually get the champion. Slam's still queuing up builds, but he's going to lose them. Well, the problem, too, is that once Hera gets here, Land's going to be knocking on Hera's eco. Yeah, with yeah, Husk girls. True. That castle goes up just in time, fortunately for Hera. Um, but the Husk girls can run in, and then Hera has to send his reinforcements back to deal with that. Yep. The long Swordsman not that impressive against Husk girls. And Lan is now on the way to Imperial, so he could always go for his own champions. They feel like the damage has been done. Hera is off that gold temporarily. In this castle, it won't go down. Uh, I think Hera will be able to stabilize. Two-handed swordsman soon. Dave, I, I'm actually beginning to feel like there is potential since Hera is untouched this whole time. Yeah, yeah, there's potential. I'm, I'm thinking the capped rams actually aren't doing too much in this situation for Tato. So yeah. maybe you should consider switching off of that or maybe sending more resources to... Uh, to land. Hera clearing up the Husk girls at his base. Yeah. Too. Now, what land would want to go into at home would be champion. And I just noticed that his gold at home is, is looking scarce. So he's trying to town center two very forward golds. Hera could have Treb soon and champions. What a great job from Slam just to buy himself enough time. Look, he dropped three TCs in the back yeah. while that was happening. I'm really liking if Hera can get the champion. I'm really liking the fact he's kept his vil count high. He's still producing, and his sling, as dominant as it looks for some stages, has had a very poor win rate in this tournament. Slam is at 105 villagers somehow, still. Yeah, all on one part really of the screen. Really impressive. Wild, man. Uh, I also don't see Lan clicking the Man at Arms upgrade, clicking the Two-Handed Swordsman upgrade. Well, I can't do that now, but... um. Wrong order, but anyways, he's not really thinking about going champs. Ahara has plenty of two-handed swordsmen. I think Tato needs to make something else now, and he's imping Dave, thinking of Kip checks. Slam needs to really get up to imp as well. Yeah, get up to imp. But his that economy is it's stalling behind. Obviously, so many stopgap measures to prevent the army from coming in. It's making longbowmen now. <laughs> He's actually researching coinage, so I think he is now going to sling Hera. But now it's going to be Spain who's switching out of the sling. I guess we'll go for champion and Kip check, which would counter Hera. There's Longsword coming in for Lan. Okay. Yeah, Lan only with 35 on food. He'll want that number to be higher. He'll also want more than 90 villagers. And look at Slam! It's come to this! Stone walls! It's the right play, Dave. He's falling further and further back in his base. Yep. He's going to run out of room soon. And Hera's actually getting raided pretty hard by just a couple of Husk girls. So falling a little bit further behind in villagers. Yeah, big thing there, I think, is he's sending a lot of these units back, right, to deal with that instead of pushing forward. Fortified wall for slam. I love that. I actually, <laughs> like, it looks messy, but it's such a cheap tech, and yeah. it'll prevent... Um, It'll prevent them for so long for coming into Slam's economy and it'll give them some more time. This is it's still, I'm thinking through everything that Spain's doing right now. Now that Tato's gonna be on Kip checks, if he can get enough of them, he counters the champion that Hera's now gone for. Yep. So Spain's still one step ahead. Tato is not, he would not sling the whole time because Land has his own economy. Now what do you make as Slam is still in Castle Age? <laughs> I mean, Spain right back on top. Yeah, if Slam could ever get up to the Imperial Age, I think they have a chance. Yeah, with, but that with forward arts. position from Tato is 
preventing him from taking any gold at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be so tough that half of his economy is just wander wondering where to go. Yeah. You have Hera now thinking, I need camels, so it's all on Hera. Hera trying to recover. Dave, we've seen it before. We've seen Canada fall behind before, and Canada really give it their best shot to hold on, but can they actually complete a comeback? They've been behind in every single game in this series. A rip to those champions in the middle for Hera. Imperial Camel would be sick, but then Goths can just switch on over into Halberdier. All the yep. things that we, we've talked about, Goths do really counter everything that Britons and... Uh, not not Kuman, sorry. Indians can go for and bad situation for Slam. Yeah, he's gonna lose all his archers here against the Kipjacks. He's building those up for quite a while. That was the only military he had on the field. Yeah. And now here come the Husk girls. Yeah, and Tato could make Trebs. He could have Siege Ram soon. I mean, there's not a lot keeping Slam alive. So Hera almost needs to push and do a lot of damage against Slam, which he might find here in a bit. Uh, but also at the same time, he needs to save his teammate from dying because Slam is part of the reason that Hera's been able to get so much out there is that sling. Great awareness from Lam. Even before Hera gets there, garrisoning the villagers, walling up behind, mm -hmm. not letting any, leaving any room to do eco damage for Hera. And now Tato pushing in with Trebs, Kipjax, and Rams against Slam, who has nothing behind this. Wow, and, and Dave, Hera's so good at expanding with farms. He's done so in the back. Look where Lan's going. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna pressure you back here. Uh, reminds me of game number one where he was very comfortable raiding while also being attacked. But he does need to worry about this. Uh, Tato's not here to help. There's a forward castle from Hera, and that's a lot of champions. It is a lot, but remember, Goss produced pretty fast. Yeah. So he can get some units in defense. I mean, that's a good castle position, but look at the castle position from Tato now on Slam. And Slam's castle is going to go down. Slam's still in the castle age. Still in the castle age. He's going full fat slob here, Slam, to survive. Hera just sent over some camels. The units are through. This is going to be a lead Huskarl versus champion up in the north. Uh, a fight that should be better for the champions, but I think Lan will be okay with losing some eco as long as Slam is dying. So Slam needs to hold on. Some decent mangonel shots there from Slam, but there's nothing to deal with the Huskarls. Dave, Lan doesn't have a lot of production. He has zero on gold right now. So yes, he's raiding, but with zero on gold, he's going to have some real problems producing units to defend himself. Tato needs to Tato, get units over there. Yeah, Tato would just sling. That's what he's been doing. I saw he sent a thousand food, a thousand gold not too long ago yeah, okay. to land. And now they're taking the castle down from Slam. Slam's eco is dead. And Hera is just now pushing into Land's main base. Yeah, I think Land will be able to hold better than Slam can. And... Well, I mean, Hera could make camels uh, against the Kipchaks, but Elite Kipchak pretty strong. Tato has four castles queuing them up, and how do you get to post imp? How do you get to this position with these civilizations? This is how. Spain is showing that they came to play. Their practice has paid off. Canadians have to be so disappointed, man. They were... I think they were confident. They played good. They dominated their group, and now this. And cannons I mean, wouldn't save you. No. Hera's not even going to take out the castle in the middle land space. He was so ah. close. Oh, you're kidding me. It Dude, won't he was happen. So, close. Oh. so demoralizing. So demoralizing. And look, land's going to find where all Slam's villagers ran to in the south. Oh, boy. Yep. Spain are just on top of it, Dave. There's, yep. th they are on top of it. Every decision they've needed to make in this series, they have done so. Imp camel in for Hera. Is imp camel enough? against the Flood and the Kipchaks. I feel like it might be for a little bit, but then Hera and Slam won't have trade. Look at Lan now, paying attention to this corner in the north, because they'll have three corners secured. Good micro from Tato, and man, these, these Imp Camels die pretty quickly. Oh god, actually, Hera taking a really good fight against the Kipchaks near Land Space with just champions. Yep, on the other but, side, uh... not so good. Now Lan has a backup for us. Lan's got champions producing of his own now. Yeah, and, and the Hera's GG's resigned. called. Wow. Oh, it feels like... What? Like Canada were favorites coming in here. Obviously, we we knew Spain probably had a 40% chance. If we if we, if we had bookies before the uh, before the series, it would probably be like 60-40. Uh, 
uh, most likely, and Spain just made it look so easy. I, I with mean, the strategy decisions. If you're new, you think that Spain are 10 times better than Canada because of the yep. preparation and everything. That was unbelievable from Spain. They slapped them, dude. They, they got destroyed slapped. Canada. My goodness. Like, from the Civ drafting to the actual execution in game to taking control, it. Every single game, Canada fell behind in some way, shape, or form. It, whether it was Dark Age or Feudal Age, there were mistakes that, can, that the Spanish players never would have made. Canada not having their brightest moments at times. And the, the strategy going from game two to game three is really what excites me about Spain. It's almost kind of a shame that other teams will see this now <laughs> as they head to the semifinals. But yeah, just to reiterate this one more time, every time Gots has been picked when Chaos Pit is out there, Goths have been used on Chaos Pit. And I think Spain maybe saw Chaos Pit was picked by Canada in the group stage. We're hoping that they were going to go for it again and mind gamed them in not one, but two games with those civs. And they saw the Indians were left too for Ghost Lake. So it's like if they you know. go Goths and you go Huskarls and they know it's going to be Britons and they know it's going to be Indians, there's nothing to deal with the Huskarls. Wow. I, um... I do feel bad, and, and please salute Canada because the Canadian teams were training so much for this. You guys yeah. have to realize all teams were, but uh, I, after speaking with some of the players, know how much effort they were putting into this. I know how much it means for them, so I'm I'm bummed to see them go out. Uh, but fun fact, I think, and I have to check the bracket, that back in 2018, granted it was a very different time, Canada also lost to Spain in a quarterfinal. I have to double-check that right after this, but... Um, there's the eco guys tato with so much wood stone and gold collected air with more food collected it didn't do anything and i'm not sure and what more they could have know, do either or done excuse me <laughs> you know the question i asked coming into this is how good was land gonna be and that was gonna be an indicator for spain land was the best player in this series i think yeah seriously i mean it's it's, it's an argument between land and tato I, but i think land was the first two games i think land was the best player in the entire room yeah yeah i mean it it's wonderful when you have a team that complements themselves so nicely yep. land's definitely a guy who the exception of goths likes to go for stable units tato's the type of guy who buys a lot of time for his team so when he's playing with viper and doubt and co he doesn't normally have the carry role he gets ahead with archers with amazing eco and then his teammates do the rest and that's pretty much what i mean land wouldn't have been as dominant if it wasn't for tato's early displays in every game um, and that's exactly what you want from every single team that will go far in the tournament.